In the farthest part of the earth, specifically in the eastern region, there is a forbidden kingdom where humans are not allowed to enter. It used to be home to monsters, demons, and animals, and every year humans send a sacrifice to be presented to the king, who will then slaughter and eat it. Salivai is the 99th sacrifice, but this time she is different from the others as she is not afraid of the king of monsters and has not shown any signs of fear. The king of monsters is impressed by her and has not harmed her until now. What is the story behind this king and why has Salivai been spared? And how can a human girl survive in a kingdom of monsters and demons? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to receive all new episodes. The anime begins with this girl being transported by some guards to the city of monsters to be presented as a sacrifice to the king of monsters. She is brought out of the car while completely bound by chains on her hands and feet, and her face is covered. She enters this place and is then locked inside. She starts walking down the corridor until she reaches these guards who take her and transport her to this strange palace that seems to be the palace of the king of monsters. The girl is peaceful and hasn't done anything when she lowers her head to the ground, bound by chains. The king of monsters sits in front of her and tells her to raise her head. When she does, the cover is lifted from her face, and she is very beautiful with blue eyes. The head of the animal says, this girl is the thinnest of all the sacrifices sent by humans. How can they deceive us when they send her to you to eat? You won't be nourished by her as she weighs less than 30 kilograms, and most of it is just bones. You should ask for another one that is more valuable so you can eat more. The girl tells him to wait and asks if he thinks he is too arrogant, calling him a dog. He gets very tense with this word and says to her, Dog. Can you believe you are talking to me like that? But I am not like that. I am Anubis, girl. You are pushing me too far, and how dare you do this to me? I am sorry, your majesty. Finally, the king spoke and said, Do not worry, Anubis, you can leave now. Anubis replied, which angered the king and he shouted at him in a loud voice, How dare you speak back to your king? Leave now! At that moment, Anubis quickly withdrew from the place and apologized to his majesty. The girl then spoke up and said, What a fierce and cold-hearted king you are. You should not be angry with people like this, or you will end up alone and no one will love you one day. The two cards spoke to her, and the terrifying and powerful king apologized immediately to Anubis. They talked to them and got to know them. One was named Lops and the other was Kyoko, who guarded the girl. The king became angry and said to the girl, You do not fear me, even though I trembled before you. If you want to die in the least painful way, bow down before me and plead for your life. But the girl was not like that. She said to him, How can you not scare me when your hands are soft and gentle? I am not afraid of you. Do what you like, even if I escape. I have no home to live in or a family waiting for me, so you must kill me now, and the matter will end. The king left her, and she said to him, My name is Sari Sarevi. What is your name? He replied, I have no name. If I had a name, it would be the blood in my veins, for it keeps my royal power. When the moon is full, I will slaughter you, but until then, I will keep you by my side as an exception. Now let us go outside the palace where people are talking about this girl wandering around the palace with all ease and relaxation. Anubis told them to calm down because she is bound by chains and, therefore, unable to escape. However, they are very fanatical that the king might consider making this human girl one of them, as kings have some strange inclinations. In the Great War 100 years ago, the late king made peace with humans arbitrarily, and we do not like humans, so how could he have done that? Anubis replied that the kings want to reduce bloodshed, but some rebels refuse to obey his orders and threaten our land to this day. Therefore, we take a truce from them every month they told him that this is not a time to play, which could make him vulnerable. Then the king tells the girl, who allowed you to leave my room, and says to these beings, why didn't you watch the girl? Then the king ordered her to return to the room. She spoke to him, saying that his room was very dull and that it would be more beautiful if it had some flowers. He replied that he wasn't interested in admiring flowers and that they didn't grow in this land because it was unsuitable for agriculture. She spoke to him, saying that he was very boring, 
so he told her that a human like her would become minced meat if she tried to leave the room again. If you want to live to see the day of the ceremony, do as I say, but I don't need to wait for the day of the ceremony to know that I can easily tear apart your weak neck. Do you still not fear me? She answered, No, I don't know anything scarier. In the past, I was reading an old book on a scary night during a storm and I found out that my name means, sacrifice, in an old language. I wanted to wake my sister up from her sleep, but she told me, did you see a nightmare in your sleep? Go to our parents if you're afraid. I overheard them talking about the next sacrifice coming from our village. My father told my mother not to worry, that our daughter would be safe, and that's why we have a substitute daughter. Suddenly, the doll I had with me fell, and they noticed me. Their looks were very frightening, and I discovered that I was raised as a sacrifice, but what really scared me were the harsh looks of the two people who were my parents. But your eyes are not like theirs, my lord, so don't scare me at all. Do you force yourself to act angry? He said to her, you are a girl who is sad about her situation. Now we move to the city of Dagtau, an ancient fortified city that is closest to Yuan. Therefore, it witnessed the fiercest fighting in the last great war. Yuan is the name we still use for the human state after 100 years since the war. The wounds are still deep so the king often comes to inspect like this, and the girl asks, what is there, and acts on her own again. The king tells the guards, leave her be and let her do as she pleases. He looks from a high place and tells her not to go any further. He orders his soldiers to leave and says that the lower town is a lawless area unlike this place. Even now, the lower town, being the farthest city from the palace, is a hotbed of rebellion and aggression, and its people often cause conflicts with humans. She asks him, did you come here to inspect it? He says, someone must stop the fools from shedding blood without reason through fear. The most effective and reliable way is for the king to use his power to achieve this goal. She speaks, saying, it must be difficult to be a king. The guard asks, where did the king go? These creatures say that the king took the human girl to a hill overlooking the ruins and they will return soon. Suddenly, the girl smells a smart scent and runs towards it, finding that flowers are growing in this place. Sally moved to another place and found many beautiful flowers, and she admired the sight very much. The king spoke to her, this is the only place where flowers bloom in this land, where the soil is fertile and there is plenty of water. I brought you here because you love flowers. She thanked him and said, I will pick some flowers to take back to the palace. He replied, they will wilt by the time we reach the palace, but she said, please, I want this. Then the king said, do as you please. He talked to himself, you humans care about strange things. Sally picked some flowers and put them on the king's head. He looked cute, and then he got angry and threw the flowers on the ground, asking her how she dared to mock a king in his kingdom. She told him, you are very strange, these flowers give me peace of mind, I love flowers very much. The king took the flowers and they returned to the palace because a thunderstorm was approaching, and because his hearing was very strong, he could sense all of this. After a series of these nights, a clear night of inspiration comes. On that night, I will finally sacrifice you. At that time, we heard the thunder again. You seemed very scared. The king was surprised and said, don't be afraid of the monsters and be afraid of the thunder? How strange, my girl. He then told her to come and hide in his tail, as he thought this would calm her down a little. The girl was very happy with this large tail. Her mood was volatile, as she was very afraid just seconds ago, but now she was happy and no longer afraid. She spoke to him and said, Listen, my lord, there is no need to pretend to be strong in front of me, as I know that it's just a matter of time before you eat me. After that, the visions disappeared and the full moon appeared. It was the night of the 14th of the month, the night of inspiration and strange rituals. They told her to do everything as the girl asked her to, she acted in very strange ways, as if she was going to marry the dress, even though she knew it was going to be slaughtered. The official was annoyed and said to her, I told you to listen to what I told you. Then they left the place and she asked him where the king was, as he was not present now, and it seemed to them that he did not show himself on this night. There was something strange about this, and they would know it in a little while. 
He took her downstairs to where the altar room was, and she had to wait until someone came to her and cut off her head. He closed the door, and the place was completely dark, and she couldn't see or distinguish between right and left. Then something strange happened. This monster appeared and hit her, causing her to fall to the ground. She began to scream, but he told her to be silent, as this was a golden opportunity to distance the king from his court. He was going to take his place, and he had to kill him today, as a hesitant king who pleases humans cannot defend us. And now, the awaited night has come when I will remove him from the royal throne and take his place. And you will be the first one I kill. He raised his dagger, and he almost killed her, but then an unknown person came and defended her and took the stab in his hand to protect her. This surprised the monster, who asked, Who is this? Is he an agent for the cowardly traitor king? At that moment, Sally stood up in solidarity with the king and told him that he was not a coward, as he was trying to stop all bloodshed as much as he could. He sacrifices his life to preserve the safety of his people. You will not be able to engage in a fight with humans because they are very powerful, and he knows all of that. He wants to stop the bloodshed and doesn't want a single drop of blood. He is truly a great king. But this monster didn't like the talk and wanted to kill them both. This brave person intervened, held up his sword, and pointed it at the monster's heart. At that moment, the monster fled quickly. Sally held on to him and asked if he was the king. He replied that he was not a king, but rather he was born a monster, but half of his blood is human. He is a coward and cannot do anything. When the moon reveals these dark lands, he hides in the darkness and waits for it to pass. He has never killed anyone before. How could someone as weak as him be a king? Sally tended to his wounds and told him that he was not weak, but rather the advisor informed her that he always performed the rituals alone, where no one saw him kill anyone. She believed that he was not fully convinced of this nonsense. You are a wonderful kind king. You injure yourself every month and stain the whole place with blood, and then you release the victim from this small door. The place is filled with blood so that no one knows that you did all this. If you were weak, you would not be able to do all of this. You are the strongest, my lord, and now I cannot escape like the rest who ran away because I do not want to live in my country again. I want to be with you, my lord. I have loved your kindness and tenderness so much. You are the kindest heart I have ever known. The next morning, the king gathered the monsters and told them that from now on, he would make Serifi his queen. Everyone was astonished, wondering how he could do this, as it would weaken the royal line with human blood. The king angrily ordered anyone who opposed to step forward if they dared. Sally told him that they would be upset and would not agree. So he told her that they wouldn't complain because he wouldn't allow them to, and then she talked to him all night saying, I was trying to think of a suitable name for you, and finally I found this name. Your new name is Lenhart, which means brave-hearted. After that, the advisor speaks to Seraphie in wonder, how could you, young lady, escape from the sacrifice and now you're trying to deceive the king? I will reveal everything. So, what will happen with Sarai and what adventures will she have with the king? Follow the next episode to know everything new, and finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell.